Hmm. It would be very helpful to uh, turn my sound on, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm sitting here mumbling to myself, and uh, and you can't hear a word I'm saying. That does not go over well. <laughs> Listen, my name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws, and this is the first live drawing session we have of 2023. It is, uh, what is it? It is Monday. Mondays we always get together at two o'clock Eastern time to draw either a landscape or or something that has to do with uh, outdoors. Sometimes sometimes we'll, we'll hit up an indoor situation. Why isn't my screen coming alive here? Let's try that just like that, and we'll we'll get this rolling here. Give me a second here, and there it goes. Okay, now we're in business. There we go. Okay, hey, now I've got my stuff together, <laughs> and we are ready to, ready to start this new year, right? So uh, let me just tell you a little bit uh, how this works. Uh, we'll spend about an hour just kind of working through some details of, of this drawing. Uh, we always do this on Monday afternoons. My time, I live on the East Coast in Pennsylvania. Uh, we have a very active Facebook group. And uh, if you want, what we usually do is I will post three different pictures and the group will vote on which picture they want to draw. And so this is what they decided to do. Uh, and then we come together on that day and draw the picture uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and then we also do something similar on Wednesdays, just to kind of give you a heads up. Wednesdays, we always look at portrait. So if you are interested in learning how to the portrait, Come back on Wednesday, uh, which tells, which reminds me is subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, do all that stuff, like the video, comment on it, and that way you won't forget to uh, tune in on Wednesday for our portrait drawing class. But that's not what we're doing today. It's Monday, and we are looking at this lovely park bench in a winter time. I made the assumption that I think this might be Central Park but it could be any any park with a bench in it, uh, and we're gonna take a look at it today, okay? So let's get started. If you happen to have any questions, please just put them right in the chat and I'll be uh, watching those. But uh, yeah, let's let's get going on this. So you know what's interesting is, is when we are drawing something that has to do with winter, <clears throat> Uh, and we're using uh, pencils or, or pen or something, you know, we're, we're actually putting in dark. And so if I go to draw these trees, uh, these, these frosted over branches uh, with dark, it kind of like gives an reverse effect. So this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge because actually we're going to think of more of the background and leave the frosted elements of these trees the white of the page. Okay, so if you're ready for that, then you've come to the right place. Let's see, let's see how this turns out. So what's key in this is that as you're drawing, you're gonna wanna try and keep some consistency uh, with your tone, all right? And I'll help you do that, but it's, it'll be a good practice, all right? So what you don't, what you don't want it to do is go in dark and then come out light and then come in dark again. No, what you're looking for is something of consistency in your tone. Okay, all right. So that's that's first step there. Next thing I want to show you, and and this is this will be good for uh, drawing something in perspective without worrying about its uh, vanishing points. All right. And it's this concept that I talk about all the time is drawing with a perspective grid. So a lot of times you will uh, you will see if sometimes a, a beginner or, or somebody will draw a portrait using a grid. And what they'll do is they'll take a, let's just say this is a, uh, here's, here's a head, a side view of a head, okay? And what they'll do is take a grid and they'll grid this out. It's it has been referred to as the grid method, all right? And then what they'll do is draw like this little section and try and follow the line as it goes from square to square. Well, 
using uh, you creating a perspective grid is is similar to a certain degree in that um, in order to figure out all of our lines in perspective we're going to use a grid to help lock those in shape so what, what do i mean by that i keep drawing on the wrong page so let's let's go over this this idea here uh drawing with a perspective grid so let's say let's say i was going to draw a house a side of a house okay and that the top of the house the top of the house is going in perspective in the bottom well that's where i would want to start my perspective grid almost like on the extreme so on your page let's just practice this really quick so let's say the the top of the house is going in perspective like this and then of course we have the bottom and it's it's going like this so these lines are converging converging to the same vanishing point and then you have a vertical for one corner of the house and then you have a vertical for the other corner of the house. Hey, Chris, how are you doing? Welcome. All right, so our perspective, we've got, we've got the top and the bottom for this perspective grid, okay? All right, let's, let's give ourselves some guides on this. So in order to draw this grid, we'll take the top and bottom, find the center point right there, okay? Over here, the same thing, top and bottom, find the center point right just like that all right center point center point of this line all right here we go those connect those two dots all right let's make another half half that and half half this and it comes up like that okay and let's do it again half and half all right, we're gonna put it there and then it, then get the other half on this side and then connect those dots. All right, so let's, let's have these again, but let's not use dots. Let's just kind of use just our mind and we should be able to get a line that's going in half here and we'll go straight down this. Okay, so all of these lines now are going in perspective now if this is the front end of a house let's add a door so let's just kind of randomly put our door over here on this one side so we're gonna have a vertical follow maybe this line right there and there we go that door is in perspective let's say we're gonna add a nice big old window right next to it well we might go with a vertical and a vertical over here and there is our window following these guides those are drawn in perspective now let's come up here and draw maybe another window and we'll just make it a small square window all right and then up here we'll draw another one per se And then maybe draw one more up here. Okay, so what we've done is we've used this perspective grid to draw all of these elements in cor incorrect perspective. So that's that's essentially uh, how you use a perspective grid to get all these elements lined up. All right, there's one more thing I want to show you because this is going to come into play when we draw this park bench. If you have a square. If you have a square like this okay and you want to find the exact center of that square what you want to do is just draw and you want to connect the corners draw an X and where that is that's the exact center of a square you don't need a ruler this also works if you have a rectangle let's say I say a rectangle like this and you want to find the dead center of that so you connect the corners All right, and where this corner is, where that crosses, that is the dead center of of, uh, of the square. Okay, next. So that, that's how you find the exact center of a square or a rectangle. Now let's say that rectangle was in perspective. So we 
have one side over there and let's just kind of here's the other side over here connect the edges okay so this now we've taken this and put it in perspective well guess what this still is true if you take the corners take the corners and where they cross that's going to be the center of that square in perspective okay so that's a that's a great trick to use so let's look at this park bench here and if you notice uh, let me add a new layer here if you notice this center um, beam is is going to be in the dead center of that park bench but this park bench is in perspective so we want to make sure that we put it where it belongs and we're going to use this method to find the center and do that okay all right with that being said let's let's get into our drawing and start to put this thing together okay I'm going to do something different here. Okay. All right. Bear with me for a second while I clean up my board, get it ready to go. All right. First thing we do on this, let's go ahead and, and get a border. All right. Let's, let's always, I always, when I'm drawing landscapes, I always like to start off with some type of border. You don't have to, but for me, it helps me in the process. Okay. Now, this is a beautiful one thing I love about this picture. It's it's uh, it's it is using the rule of thirds to for its composition and. Here's an extra little tip. Look, they have almost two thirds for the sky and one third for the ground. So when you are drawing a landscape or anything, that's something to keep in mind. You could always have your picture uh, by thirds. So uh, it just makes it far more compelling. So you could either have the ground to be one third and the sky to be two thirds, or you can make the ground to be two thirds and the sky to be one third. Just something to think put in the back of your mind and just remember that uh, next time you draw a landscape so let's put in this horizon line just like this and let's look at this picture carefully before we before we jump into it so as i'm as i'm looking at the photograph the first thing I'm looking at is the position of this bench. And believe it or not, the, the, the position of the bench is also in the middle of the, the middle third of the picture. Here, let me show you what I mean by that. Hold on. I keep making the mistake of drawing on the same layer as this photograph. But now I got it. I got it all worked out. All right, let's bring this up. Okay, now we're ready. Look at this here. Look at the width of it. This, this bench is about, well, the back end there is about that width. Well, we could even go to there, okay? Well, look at that. It almost is an equal thirds across the page. You see that? So. The middle part of this photo is taken of the bench by a third, all right? So with that being said, let's, let's look at our bottom part of our picture and just put some, just put a light, light edge there and a light edge there. And so we're gonna divide that up in thirds and push position our bench to be in that area there. Okay, let's go ahead and just draw an, a line for the top of that bench that's going to be angled. So watch what I do here. I'm just going to start off just by this, okay?
first angle right there. Okay, let's come all the way now. Let's come all the way to the bottom where, I'll show you where this is here. Let's look for this angle. You see that? So this was, this is the first angle we just drew. Let's try and draw that second angle. All right, and I'm going to roughly look at that and make sure, let's see. Okay, that looks pretty good. So you could even, so that's about where I'm at there, okay. Hey, Allison, woo, you made it live. Hello and happy new year. <laughs> All right. Now the second the second angle I want to draw is going to be this one here. Look at this. This is the other one I want to I want to put in. Uh, but before you do, make sure. Look at this. Look how close it is to this angle versus how far it is from the top there. Okay. So what does that mean? So looking at my drawing here. I'm going to go about there, I think. Making sure that all of these three lines converge, okay? That's what we're looking for. The path is also, that is true. It's another guide we can use. All of these things are lined up. Chris says the path also uh, is on that same vanishing point where that pile of snow is, is heading to that same vanishing point. True. Okay, so let's start right, right there where I put that dot. And this bench, this bench is on an angle. Okay, so it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, let me turn this around here. It's not straight or down, it's at an angle. So the first thing you're gonna do is put this slightly at an angle. <clears throat> so let's come over here and match that with a parallel angle. All right, let's get the seating area and that's going to have this this angle. And if if this bench ends up not looking exactly like the picture, it's totally okay as long as we get our bench as long as you get your bench in perspective. That's that's far more important to me than than getting it to match the photo. So same thing using that Using that parallel line, that's what we're looking at right there. All right, here we go. Let's let's drop a leg. Let's drop a little bit of a leg right there, maybe. All right, and this. I'm just kind of looking at the picture and just kind of guesstimating the height of that. And let's follow along. This is also going to go at an angle here. And here's the other leg right there. And it, during this uh, video, if I go too fast, just just tell me to slow down and we'll slow it down, okay? All right, from this point right here, I'm going to bring this back and I'm going to draw a guide. You see that? That's going to also go back to that vanishing point. So all, all of these lines should kind of give an idea that they're all converging. And then let's drop 
a straight down for that back leg there. Okay, don't 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 put the center leg in it yet because we want to determine where that the center of this whole thing is. And that's what we're going to do right now. All right, let's look at the back where where you kind of lean back, lean back on your chair there, okay? Let me get it over here. So very lightly, very lightly, I'm going to connect that right there, okay? Those corners I'm going to connect those corners right there. So that gives me the dead center of the back of the back of that bench there. And now using I'm going to draw another line here that's parallel to the ones on the outside. And then <clears throat> like an ant you're going to walk along the surface here okay so what i mean by that is watch now i'm going to walk along the surface across the top and then straight down the center just like that Now my lines might be a little bit too dark. So when you're doing this on your own, just try and draw as light as possible so that you can uh, use these as guides without going too dark on you. Okay, let's get these wood slats going across this, this uh, bench here. So on this, we're gonna, this is where our perspective grid is gonna be helpful. I'm gonna divide that in half. I'm gonna come way over here and divide that in half. And now I'm going to connect those two and this will be one of my wood slats. And when I'm drawing, I'm pushing down and pulling up, pushing down and pulling up. And this, this gives a real nice taper, a real nice taper to your line. And I think gives it a lot of, a lot of life to it. A lot of life to it. Okay, let's put another, let's put another, uh, um, board above that. And again, we're going to go right down the center here. Now I, I know our picture has four slats, but I'm gonna I'm gonna disregard that. We're not gonna do that. We're only gonna put three in, I think. And then we'll put one on top as well. All right. Now let's let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at this. Now look in the picture, and you will notice that this this has a slight S curve. You see that? Because that's where the body sits down into that divot, right? So let's let's do that because. And we could, we'll just put that in place of what we already have. So let's delete that and come here. And I'm just going to go with a slight S curve here. Here I go. Slight S curve. And I could draw right on top of that straight line. And when I say S curve, I mean something like this. All right. It has an S, kind of an S shape to it. All 
All right, let's put in now our first first uh, slat of wood and we're gonna put it back toward the back here. And then let's put another slat up toward the front. Let's divide that in half, and we can just visually do this now. And I'm just going to put a couple more lines in there to give, give the sense that there's a couple more... Uh, slats of wood going across there. Okay, so that's that's the hardest part of this um, of this bench here. Now we can just come in here and add some nice detail so we can curve up it curve up an edge there and if you look at the picture it has some nice decorative iron work so we could just do something like this on the sides here i'm just gonna put this and let's see what we got going in the center there all right so it's it kind of has this curly cue there huh another curly cue there maybe And don't feel rushed. I'm, I'm not going to run. We'll kind of get that in place here before we uh, jump into those trees. All right. Then it has these armrests. So this kind of, they kind of come up here. And then another one over here. And then we have that back end over here, okay? And the rest of that is in the snow. So part of the drawing process is usually, we didn't really put a gesture, but I go with gesture, construction, and detail. So we jumped right into the construction phase got these construction elements set down we got our perspective right and then once we have those underlying drawings of our construction now i'm just drawing on top of it adding adding some uh, uh detail that then takes that construction and makes it look more like natural versus just a box Okay, so then they have this, look at this behind, right behind this bench here, they have got this trash can, and that cr trash can, you could start off with the angle, look at that, that has a little bit of an, an angle to it, and it's a, it's a cylinder, so what we have to do is just make sure we curve, curve the top. And then it has this, the way it comes in contact with the uh, uh, ground because of the snow. It's, I got a little bit of a tangency there on mine. All right. There you go. Okay, how's everyone doing? Do you, do you need uh, do you need a couple minutes to get caught up? Am I going too fast, or are you ready to start? If you need me to slow down, just type an S. Put an S in the keyboard there, and I'll slow down. Give you some an extra minute or so. I'm going to get me a cup of coffee, okay? All right. 
there you go. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and, and get these trees in now. All right, so this is where we're going to start off with a little bit of gesture to give us some guidelines. Okay, so uh, let's just as light as possible. This is important. Stay as light as possible. We're just, I'm just going to come around here and kind of give myself a containment, something like that, okay? Just a line of boundary, all right, as I'm coming around. And then I'm going to do the same thing for that big tree in the middle. And the way that I'm looking at this, let me, let me demonstrate it for you. This is what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm kind of, when I'm going to draw this boundary, I'm going to just kind of very lightly do that sort of thing. Almost like a, a top of a piece of broccoli or something. All right, so let's see. Where are we? We're going to start right there. Very, very light. Okay. Very light. Okay, so <clears throat> let's come in here now and start thinking about these trunks. And the thing is, with with it's it's winter time, so you're going to see a lot of a um, lot more branches. All right, so let's walk through this very slowly with one another. There's there's two main trunks. You see them, and you could get an idea. So watch how I do this here. I'm just going to come up. Start with a single trunk there, and then I'm going to come up here. I'm just keeping it keeping it light right now. I could always come in and add a little bit more dark to it. Would you always put? Uh, Chris asks, would you always put in the boundary shapes before the trunks? I do. I do because it, it helps to constrain where where this is all going to go, okay? All right, let's let's continue. Let's add another trunk here and I'm just like I said, this is just kind of an idea of gesture. And I do want you to look at the different size the size of the trunks. You know, there's I'm getting variation. That's important. Be careful because you don't want to make them all exactly the same size. You want to have some variation. Hey, Pamela. All right, you're coming in. Good, you're good. All right, excellent. Okay, so over here on the left-hand side, I'm just going to add a smaller piece. You see this? So I'm, I'm not making these trunks continuous here. I'm giving, naturally, I'm leaving some space open. There's a little bit of a Y right there. Another Y over there, maybe, right? Just trying to go as light as possible right now. I'm also varying the thickness of my line. So these this trunks still are thicker at the bottom, and then when I get these little twigs, I'm just just giving these 
leave things just a teeny teeny thinness and I can come back I'm going to come back into them a little bit later and thick them up okay let's let's move on to uh, some of these other trees down here so we right above the corner here we've got this guy so let's just kind of give him a border as well even though and then he has his friend right next to him here it's gonna give me some guidance here okay so here we go let's let's start off with a center all the way up to the top of the tree there and I as I get smaller I'm, I'm leaving breaks I'm leaving breaks in it and this other guy is also gonna go up in that direction Staying as light as possible. This to me is still gesture because I'm just I haven't committed yet to dropping in some super darks. I'm just still at this point just kind of planning, planning roughly where I think everything's going to fall. Okay, let's get some of these bushes in and I'm going to start at the left and you can almost see these groupings. So if you want to see over here, so I'm just going to come in here with some light tone. So there's, there's one group and it, they're very... There's one there and then there's another group in the background here so I want to get a nice separation there. Okay, look there's a tree coming up there. I can add that as well. A tree trunk. And then this this group of bushes, look at this. This, this gets quite big right there. You see that? Trying to create variation. All right, there's another big tree that's coming in over here. Let's break his trunk up a little bit as we put him in. And then of course you've got a whole bunch of dark ones over here. This is great. So that's variation in size. I think I think that's key is to really be careful of the variation size. Your mind your mind is going to want to make them all the same size. But you really have got to resist that that temptation. All right. 
Now, now this is when the magic happens. <laughs> I need you to reverse the way that you're thinking of this picture right now, okay? I need you to look at the sky, the shape of the sky, okay? So, for example, what we're going to do now, and let me bring up the red here and bring up a new layer. This is what I want you to start thinking of. I want you, we're going to come in here and add tone, but we're going to add tone to the sky, okay? Typically, we don't do that. We let the white of the page to be the... Uh, the sky tone but not this time we're going to let the white of the page to be our frost area all right so i'm going to leave that up there for you to give you some guidance as we do this but you just need to go very methodically and you need to think of the shape what's the shape of the sky so why don't why don't you watch me first and then i'll pause and you can get caught up so here we go it's it's almost like it's almost like a watercolor. If I was gonna paint this with watercolor and I wanted to uh, make these trees white, this is what I'm going to do. So try and get that even tone. Let's just see here. You're either gonna hate me <laughs> or love me. <laughs> All right, you see what I'm doing? So. I just want you to go up here and start to add some tone. Don't worry about just where the sky is touching itself. With a very, very even tone, okay? I know it looks, look at mine. Mine looks awful right now. So let's all draw some awful pictures right now. Keep this as a continuous shape, okay? Okay. So um, that's where I'm at. I'm going to give you about two minutes to get to get your yours to about the same point. I promise you. Two minutes. Go. gonna work I know it is <laughs> trust trust look at this right here see this right there trust the process <laughs> trust the process it's all gonna come together here I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. Thirty more seconds. All 
All right, here we go now. All right, so now over here, I'm going to add just a little bit. Now I'm going to come in here and add some extra little pieces of tone. Little, little patches, all right? Trying to make variation of size and shape here, all right? Keep it light. That's all I'm doing. I'm not worrying about the detail yet, just trying to get some tone in. Don't judge yourself on the way it looks. Just go through the process with me. Believe me, it just, it takes time. It takes time to get this stuff down. through the back the top end of my drawing here and just adding a secondary tone because you can see that the picture has a little bit of a gradation of this blue Okay, 30 more seconds and we'll move on. And then the magic is gonna happen really fast. <laughs> You're like, how? <laughs> no, it will, I guarantee it. Okay, so so we have our we, this is our this is our gesture in a sense. This is our underdrawing, and on top of this, now we can start to get a little bit more detail. So let's let's come back to our main tree. And our main tree here is if you if you're not sure what I'm referring to, it's it's this it's this guy right there. Okay, so that's that's what I'm going to focus on right now. So let's come down, and now that I have this, now I'm going to come in and really punch in punch in these uh, uh, trunks and and I'm gonna start on now this trunk on the right hand side first uh, is going to be divided you see it's like thick on one side and thin on the other so I'm just gonna come in here and I'm still gonna use leave some gaps And then I'm pushing down and I'm pulling up. All the way up to the top, getting thinner and thinner. All right, 
I'm going to make it the bottom even more thicker, I think. Okay, now the, now the twin trunk. It's variation. One side is thick, one, th one side is going to be thin. Pushing down, and then as you make your mark, push down and pull up. Push down and pull up. So you, this is this is constantly what you're trying to do. draw the other trunk now. Let's see, Chris says, uh, this is a good one. Is It's usually the clear sky is the light. Yeah, that's true. It's, uh, you guys, you guys voted on it. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'm going to stop there on mine. I'm going to stop there on mine. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next to it. Now, if I if I take my eyes and I squint, I squint to my picture, right away I'm asking myself, where is the deepest contrast, all right? So the first thing, the first thing I see immediately is the contrast with the sky compared to the top of my tree there. So, you know what? Believe it or not, I got to come back in here and think about the edge where where the sky is coming in contact with this top of this tree here and i have to actually come back in and, and darken my sky just a little bit to get this look that i'm looking for here And then, then when I'm actually drawing the, the tree part, look, can you see that there's like variations of value within the frozen area of the tree? For example, let me show you this up here. Look at this, look, look how white that is there compared to how gray this is down there. You see, look at those two values. Look at the value right in there compared to the value right in there. You see that? And look at the value of this compared to the value of that. All right. So let's let's put let's do that. Let's put that into our picture here. All right. So over here and I'm just going to add a light value. Right, that's a good start right there. And then I'm going to come down here and add another one. All right, I'm going to make my way across here and maybe add a large section. Ooh, we're up to an hour. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna keep going, okay? Because this is, uh, I wanna, I don't wanna cut you off short here. So if, if you have to, 
If you have to bounce, by all means. Okay, so let's let's create some depth of field here. You know, and I, I have, let me, I'm gonna point something out on my drawing. And once again, if I'm going too fast, just stop me, okay? Look look how bright. Quick question, composition, would you, Chris, Chris asked a question. Uh, composition, would you say that the upper left and right corners being darker in value distract or help? Um, well, your eye is always going to go to the lighter areas. So we will, um, also your eyes are going to go to the strongest contrast. So right now there's so much contrast, Chris, in the bench, uh, that my eye is going straight down toward that bench right now. Whereas the top corners, there's not as much contrast. Do you see what I'm saying? So right now I... I'm going to try and concentrate all of the contrast toward that horizon line and just kind of let the corners fade away, okay? Okay, so creating depth of field now. Look at that trunk where I put that little red arrow. That trunk right there is lighter than the trunks that I just, the double trunks I just drew. So let's, let's come in here and maybe add a couple more. Sure. A couple more vertical lines down here to kind of give the idea that this is kind of thick in the background there. You see that? Now this this other tree on the left, I'm, I'm moving this way across my picture. I'm going to make him just a little bit more darker. But but try and get some different a middle value there okay so he's not he's not as dark let me show you this so it, it's not as dark as this and it's not as light as that but it's somewhere in between okay Oh, cancel. Where am I looking here? Let's do that. Okay. Look at look at the change here, the variation. I'm I'm very careful not to get those uh to offset some of those branches there. and breaking up some of these bushes with some other value changes and these sticks coming through, you see that? You know, part of drawing is not like knowing when to push real hard on your pencil and and pull it back. And as you notice, I I've, I've man, I, I've never been 
it, it's okay to erase. It, there's there's no harm in erasing, but I've never been a big fan of trying to erase. I instead I try and draw lightly, and really get. Uh, and if I make a mistake, I just draw right on top of it. But to me, the idea of trying to um, control your line with pressure um, makes for a great a great picture. Now let's come over here now and, and darken, maybe darken one of these up just a little bit more. And looking at the, where these trunks start and stop in the snow, giving them a variation in height. Okay. Okay, next next thing let's do this now. This is on snow, so let's let's put some shadow going across, okay? So watch what I do here. I'm just going to get some nice I'm looking closely at my drawing, at, at my picture, but I'm just kind of running running some tone flat across the surface of that snow, okay? I don't want to add any like little grasses down here because that will that will quickly uh, say that it's not snow it will look more like grass oh look look i just made a mistake look look at this here this is a great i lost concentration for a second because i was thinking more what i was drawing but look what look what my mind did it almost made this equal 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 you see that i i put my shadows in almost symmetrically So this is why you always got to be like as, trying to make it asymmetrical. So let's just add a little something there and that will break it up a little bit. Okay, last thing. Last thing I want to do before we call it a day here is let's let's look at this path here and let's let's think of this path here now this path is going back in like someone uh plowed it so let's just add some straight lines here maybe going back lightly to that vanishing to that vanishing mark in the back there and then I'm going to add some surface lines. Now you, you can't see this in the snow, but very lightly, I'm just going to add some 
take liberty and add some surface lines to give this idea that we've got snow piled up here. And I don't know if I'm successful in this. <laughs> this just might this that might just look like grasses. I don't know. All right. Let's see what happens here. I I think that's going to do it. <laughs> so you could you could keep going at this. I mean, I I'm, you know, definitely, you know, I could there's there's more little uh smaller details you could add to like keep adding to your picture. It's like I can come back in here, I think, and make these trunks in the distance here maybe a little bit more defined. There seems to be a, a thicket back here, right? Sharpen up some of these edges here where the sky's coming in. I think that's gonna do it there. There's there's our winter our winter uh, drawn picture for Central Park. We've gone way over time. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. My name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws, and I just want to uh, encourage you if you're not part of our Facebook group, uh, join it. The, there's a link down here in the description, um, and hit that. Uh, please do comment on the video and. Hit that notification bell. We will be doing this again on Wednesday, looking at how to draw the portrait. Uh, and so tune in for that. Chris, thank you for tuning in and your comments. Pamela, thank you. And Allison, jumping into the chat there and saying hello to everybody. If you're watching this on a recording, thank you so much for watching. My name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws. And this is our Monday edition of our afternoon live. Okay. Talk to you all later. Have a great day. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.